everyone, MB out here for a hike on a chilly but sunny February day. Today's lesson is all about tracking wildlife in the winter. And although we don't often see elusive wildlife, we can see the signs that they leave behind. It's almost as if you're a detective trying to solve a mystery. In today's lesson, we'll aim to cover five different points about winter wildlife tracking. Everything from what you'll need to track wildlife, where and when to go, as well as how to examine scat, tracks, and signs. As a turkey hunter myself, tracking is an important part of the hunt. It helps me to understand the daily patterns and habits of the wild turkey that I'm after. To begin, let's chat about what you need to get started with wildlife tracking. First of all, you need a place to go. Whether it be a public park or your own backyard, just make sure wherever you go, you get permission. Make sure you're dressed for the weather and that for safety reasons, someone knows where you're going and when you plan to return. Here are a few things you can pack in your bag. Pick up a good field guide, something that is small and packs away easily, perhaps something that is waterproof. You'll need a measuring tape or some sort of a ruler and a camera. When taking a photo of an animal track, it's important that you include some form of a scale, whether it be a ruler or your measuring tape, or even something as simple as your hand, something of a known size that will help you to investigate the track at a later time. In terms of where and when to go wildlife tracking, they say that if you want to find an animal, you have to think like that animal. Where would it go for food or for shelter? Let that lead you to the habitats where you might find their tracks, their scat, or their sign. Going wildlife tracking a few hours after a fresh snow is a great way to find fresh tracks. All right, let's talk about tracks. It's important when you find a set of tracks to approach them slowly and carefully as to not disturb them. As someone who has two young children and as someone who works with children, this can be tricky because everybody wants to see the tracks close up right away. So just keep that in mind. You can learn a lot just by looking at a track. Who left the track? This is where practice identifying tracks comes into play. As you get better, you'll be able to recognize them easier. Use a field guide, a ruler, use your camera to snap a photo to show others to collaborate and reach a decision. How long ago did it pass through? Do the tracks appear fresh or weathered? What direction were they going? By becoming familiar with identifying tracks, we can determine which part of the track is the toe and which is the heel. Because all animals lead with their toes, this indicates the direction the animal is traveling. How fast were they going? An animal that is moving faster or running, their footprints will be further spaced apart. Ungulates like moose and deer, if they are running, they tend to spread their toes apart for stability, something also to make note of in the track. Here's something you can try to determine your stride length. First, let's start with our walking stride length. Using a tape measure, measure out a set known distance, for example, three to five meters with a marker at each end. Next, start walking about two or three meters prior to the first marker to get yourself up to a natural speed or pace. Then once you hit the first marker, start counting the number of steps and stop when you reach the second. Divide the known distance by the number of steps you took. This will determine your stride length. Try it again, but pick up your speed. Try running between 0.1 and 0.2 and see what your stride length is. How do they compare? All right, let's talk about scat. Scat is the naturalist's term for poop. 
and you can learn a lot about the animals passing through just by taking a look at their scat. Different animals leave different types of scat, different shapes, different sizes, different colors. You can determine how recently the animal has passed through. Does the scat look fresh? Does it look weathered? And if you're brave enough to take a closer look, you can also determine what the animal has been eating. In addition to tracks and scat, you can also look for signs that animals leave behind. For example, a kill site. Here I've come across some fur. This fur likely belongs to an eastern cottontail. And if I flip this piece over, does everybody see that blue patch, that light blue patch? This is an indicator that food is scarce for the rabbits. In harsh winter conditions, when the browse species that the rabbits are used to eating are not available, they will consume European buckthorn, which the chemicals turn their urine blue. Now, this must have taken place before last night's snowfall. You can see that the tracks are filled in with snow, making it trickier to identify. When a rabbit browses, the branches they consume will be generally lower to the ground, about as high as a rabbit could reach, and they'll be sliced off on a roughly 45 degree angle. They are able to use their top and bottom incisors to make a nice clean cut. Deer browse, however, varies because they lack the top incisors. When a deer grabs a branch, they'll just rip it off and it won't look as clean. Finding fur or feathers on the ground or lower branches can be common, especially in the late spring or early summer, as animals with thick winter coats begin to shed or molt that thick winter layer. After the rut in the early winter, you may get lucky enough to find a shed antler. In that same area, keep your eyes open on the surrounding trees, looking for patches of bark removed where the male deer have rubbed up against. You may also come across remnants of animals whether it be a carcass, or a skull, or even some bones. So keep your eyes open. Animals, especially those with narrow feet or shorter legs, will trample down a set area, set pathway known as a game trail. Makes it easier to walk in the deep snow to help them conserve energy. Almost like a little highway for wildlife. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and comment below. If you and your class would like to connect with one of our educators through a free live virtual question and answer session, just drop us an email. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay connected as we learn together outside the classroom.